Now let's talk about temperature. But first let's talk about my palette layout. I've got my cooling agents here on the left, my titanium white, ultramarine blue, and my Seavers blue, or it's that's my cerulean. Then I've got my warming agents across the top, starting with Cad Yellow Lemon Pure, Yellow Ochre, Orange, Naphthol Red, Burnt Sienna, Permanent Red Violet, that's my alizarin, and Dioxazine Purple. And I'm kind of working across the color wheel with this setup. So now we're going to start with a basic color wheel, starting with the three primaries. I'm going to use my Cad Yellow Lemon Pure as my primary yellow. And then we're going to grab my warm red, which is the naphthol red. You could also use cadmium red light. And ultramarine blue will be our basic blue for this color wheel. And now to make a secondary color, we mix any two primaries together. So here is a secondary green. And when I say secondary, I mean that this green is made only of yellow and blue. And it's the same story with creating orange. We're going to use our warm red, our naphthol red, and mix that in with our yellow. Now this stage here, making secondary colors, is pretty simple until we get to the purple. Mixing the warm red and the blue together gives you a fairly muddy purple. It's, it's almost a brown, really. I mean, it is in the purple family. And in the painting process, this is actually a very useful color. So just to review, orange, green, and purple are secondary colors on our palette wheel. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of white to this purple mixture so you can see better the actual color because it's very dark. So there you can see it's a, a bit of a grayish uh, purple. Now if we take our cooler red, in this case my permanent red violet, and we use that with our blue, you'll see that it gives us a much more vibrant purple. And when you need a more vibrant purple, this is very useful. Again, I'll add a little bit of white so you can compare the two a little bit better. And you can see that purple is a much richer, um, I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue, uh, but it's a much richer, more vibrant purple than the one made with our warm red. So be aware of that. You really, to have a complete color wheel, you need both a warm and a cool red. You can kind of divide the color wheel into a warm side and a cool side. The cools are below, warms across the top. Orange is really the warmest, followed by yellow, followed by red. Then there's green, which is closer to the yellow. Purple is next, because it's closer to the red, and blue is the coolest color. And speaking of the blue, we're going to add this Seavers blue, which is very similar to Cerulean. And I will also add a little white to our ultramarine so that we can get a little more accurate comparison. Now the white does cool it down a little bit, but I just want to lower the value. And you can see when you compare these two now together, actually let's add a little bit of white to the cerulean as well to make it a fair test. 
but you can see that the cerulean it almost looks like it's got a little bit of yellow in it compared to the ultramarine and so therefore I personally consider the cerulean to be a warmer blue than the ultramarine. So now we have our primary and secondary colors and we're going to talk about our tertiary colors. Tertiary colors anytime you mix a secondary with a primary and especially if you go directly across the color wheel it's going to create a fairly neutral color. So here you can see I'm mixing red and green. Now we're going to do the orange-blue combination. Again we're going straight across the color wheel with one primary and one secondary color to create a tertiary color. And well, look at that. Both of those tertiary colors are pretty similar. Let's try the yellow-purple combination. I'll use a little bit of both of my reds here um, and my yellow. And there you go. Uh, it's, it's three different ways to mix almost exactly the same color. I'm going to put just a little more green in this one. Looks a little too red. And a tiny bit of blue added to our orange mixture to bring the three tertiary colors a little closer. But isn't that interesting that we can make basically the same color in three different ways? And that's how it often is in painting. There's often more than one way to get there, especially when you're talking about tertiary colors. So again, yellow, purple, orange, blue, and red, green. Any of those combinations will make you a fairly neutral brown color. Now let's take, I'm going to mix up a little bit more of our green because I want to talk about color temperature. And green is really the largest uh, color family. It ranges from very gray to very intense and from very cool to very warm. But in this case we're going to start with our secondary green. This is just our lemon and our ultramarine blue mixed together. And now I'm going to take a little bit of white and blue start with the blue. Now of course the blue is a much darker value so the first thing that happens is we're, we're, we're raising the value and I don't want that so I'm going to add a little bit of white to bring the value back down. I want to make these mixtures all in the same value. And you can see how much that cooled off the green. It's a much cooler green now. And if we want to kind of neutralize the green, we can add a little bit of our purple. Again, we've darkened the value, so we're going to bring that back in line with our white. And look how, how gray uh, that's become. It's a very neutral green, hardly even green anymore. And then we're going to go the other direction and warm our green mixture with a little bit of our red. Again this has uh, darkened the value just a little bit so I will add just a little bit of white again to bring it back up. But that is definitely warmer than what we did with the purple. And then if we want to just really warm the mixture we can add a little bit of yellow and orange and that is going to be about as warm as we'll be able to get uh, from these particular set of paints. So let's just zoom in so you can see that a little better. So these are all you know approximately the same value uh, but very different mixtures and I hope that that helps you understand temperature a little better. Now let's talk about transparent versus opaque. This is Liquin Original 
And this is an alkyd resin, and it's really excellent for this type of purpose where you want to have a transparent passage in your painting. And it's so much better to use something like this instead of your thinner. You know, your paint thinner is trying to dissolve the paint, trying to break it apart, and it will often dry kind of matte. Whereas if you're using liquid, it's doing the opposite. It's trying to glue everything together. It, it, it helps adhere the paint to the panel or canvas and it, it also dries in a more satin or semi-gloss um, fashion which is often much more desirable when you're trying to achieve a transparent passage. Now this is just a dry paper towel and I'm just rubbing into this to show you how I sometimes will stain or you know get just a very light um, transparent area so you have a, a lot of room to play even when you're working transparently. Now when you lay down some thicker paint on top of this how what you're able to achieve depends a lot on how you pick up the paint. If you stand the brush up on its tip and you scoop up a large amount of paint then you can gently lay that on top of your transparent passage and just let it sit on top. The two layers don't really mix unless you hit that stroke of paint again and push it into the paint underneath it. And, and this is when I, when I hear beginning students complain that they get mud, muddy colors, this is why you're over mixing on the canvas. You keep blending and blending and then you get a third color that you really didn't want. And then you go back to the original color and try and bring it back, but it's just muddy and it's lost its transparency. So, you know, over mixing is the number one cause of muddy color. Again, pick up enough paint and lay it on thick like you mean it and then don't touch it again. I can even do this on top of the green stroke which was thick paint. I can go again on top of that with some yellow and just lay it on top and leave it. And those colors remain perfectly clean unless I go in and start over blending, right? So again, how you pick up the paint, scooping up enough paint and then laying it down with some authority, lightly dragging it, leaving some nice heavy brush strokes. Then you can go back and often I end up like adjusting one side of that stroke. Uh, I'll drag it one way or the other, scrub it in, whatever's necessary if I need to soften the edge. But that is the main idea is that, you know, over blending on the canvas is the main culprit with regard to muddy color. So I hope you found that valuable. Now I'm going to clean off my panel so that I can use this again for another painting. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.